Well, good morning. It is September the 4th. I guess you're going to be able to tell uh, what time of the day I, I do these recordings because I'm going to say good morning or good afternoon or good evening or whatever it is. But today is September the 4th. And so this is the September the 4th reading. Uh, no matter what time of the day I'm recording this, we are going to look at Psalms 114 through Psalms 119. Psalms 119 being the longest chapter in the Bible. So the reading will be <clears throat> not extremely long, but a little longer than than uh, typical. Then we are going to go to Proverbs chapter 31, which is the very last chapter of Proverbs. Now, there is no New Testament reading today, so maybe that offsets the longest chapter in the Bible in, in the book of Psalms. And, uh, and so then that will be our reading for today. If you have extra time, we are going to have uh, an article that we're going to read called A Most Interesting Act of Kindness. And I believe that it is going to be after the book of Psalms 119. It, that's, uh, that's the chapter uh, that uh, is the, uh, the thrust of this uh, uh, article that we're going to read most a most interesting act of kindness. But let's start out today with the book of Psalms. Again, uh, please uh, like, subscribe to this channel. If you're uh, watching this or listening to this on YouTube, down in the lower right-hand corner, there is a place where you can click it, uh, subscribe, be a part of going through the Bible in a year. Amen. And so let us begin with Psalms chapter number 114. Psalm 114. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah became his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the little hills like lambs. What ails you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? O mountains, that you skipped like rams, O little hills like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of waters. Psalm 115 Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the Gentiles say, so where is their God? But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. Feet they have, but they do not walk. Nor do they mutter through their throat. Those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. O oh, Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. 
The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor any who go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Psalm 116 I love the Lord, because He has heard my voice and my supplications. Because He has inclined His ear to me, therefore I will call upon Him as long as I live. The pains of death surrounded me, and the pangs of Sheol laid hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I implore you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low, and he saved me. Return to your rest. O oh, my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I spoke. I am greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O oh Lord, Truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Psalm 117 Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples, for his merciful kindness is great toward us and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. That's got to be one of the shortest chapters. <clears throat> Psalms 117, two verses. Psalm 118 Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say, His mercy endures forever. I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore I shall see my desire on those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord 
than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They surrounded me, yes, they surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They surrounded me like bees. They were quenched like a fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. You pushed me violently that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them, and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you, for you have answered me, and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Psalm 119 Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies, as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your way. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may see wondrous things from your law. I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul breaks with longing for your judgments at all times. You rebuke the proud, the cursed who stray from your commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. 
princes also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your statutes. Your testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, so I shall meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies. O、oh、Lord, do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies, and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things, and revive me in your way. Establish your word to your servant, who is devoted to fearing you. Turn away my reproach, which I dread, for your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. Let your mercies come also to me, O Lord. Your salvation, according to your word. So shall I have answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word, and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have hoped in your ordinances, so shall I keep your law continually, for ever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. I will speak of your testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. My hands also I will lift up to your commandments, which I love. And I will meditate on your statutes. Remember the word to your servant, upon which you have caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for your word has given me life. The proud have me in great derision, yet I do not turn aside from your law. I remembered your judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Indignation has taken hold of me because of the wicked. Who forsake your law? Your statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and I keep your law. This has become mine because I kept your precepts. You are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep your words. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. I thought about my ways, and turned my feet to your testimonies. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. The cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks to you, because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you, and those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good. And do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. 
that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let, I pray, your merciful kindness be for my comfort, according to your word, to your servant. Let your tender mercies come to me, that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they treated me wrongfully with falsehood. But I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me, those who know your testimonies. Let my heart be blameless regarding your statutes, that I may not be ashamed. My soul faints for your salvation, but I hope in your word. My eyes fail from searching your word, saying, When will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in smoke, yet I do not forget your statutes. How many are the days of your servant? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? The proud have dug pits for me which is not according to your law. All your commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help me. They almost made an end of me on earth, but I did not forsake your precepts. Revive me according to your loving kindness, so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth, and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances, for all are your servants. Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. I am yours. Save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked wait for me to destroy me, but I will consider your testimonies. I have seen the consummation of all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever, to the very end. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. 
Uphold me according to your word, that I may live, and do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Hold me up, and I shall be safe, and I shall observe your statutes continually. You reject all those who stray from your statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. You put away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. I have done justice and righteousness. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Be surety for your servant for good. Do not let the proud oppress me. My eyes fail from seeking your salvation and your righteous word. Deal with your servant according to your mercy and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. It is time for you to act, O Lord, for they have regarded your law as void. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold, yes, than fine gold. Therefore, all your precepts concerning all things I consider to be right. I hate every false way. Your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. The entrance of your words gives light, gives understanding to the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for your commandments. Look upon me and be merciful to me, as your custom is toward those who love your name. Direct my steps by your word, and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from the oppression of man, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. Rivers of water run down from my eyes, because men do not keep your law. Righteous are you, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. Your testimonies which you have commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal has consumed me, because my enemies have forgotten your words. Your word is very pure, therefore your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. Trouble and anguish have overtaken me, yet your commandments are my delights. The righteousness of your testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding, and I shall live. I cry out with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I will keep your statutes. I cry out to you. Save me, and I will keep your testimonies. I rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help. I hope in your word my eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. Hear my voice according to your loving kindness. O oh Lord, revive me according to your justice. They draw near who follow after wickedness. They are far from your law. You are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. Concerning your testimonies, I have known of old that you have founded them forever. Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Revive me according to your word. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great are your tender mercies, O Lord. 
revive me according to your judgments. Many are my persecutors and my enemies, yet I do not turn from your testimonies. I see the treacherous and am disgusted because they do not keep your word. Consider how I love your precepts. Revive me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Princes persecute me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. I hate and abhor lying, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. Lord, I hope for your salvation, and I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and your testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your word. My lips shall utter praise, for you teach me your statutes. My tongue shall speak of your word, for all your commandments are righteousness. Let your hand become my help, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise you, and let your judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Oh, what some wonderful, wonderful word. Amen. Uh, Just thinking about how long that chapter is, but how good it is. Praise the Lord. We are going to turn now to Proverbs. uh, Proverbs and uh, chapter 31 which is the very last chapter uh, in this book. Proverbs 31. The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. What, my son? And what, son of my womb? And what, son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing, and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink, and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the speechless, in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax 
and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. <clears throat> she makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you Sell them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. That is a stunning chapter. Amen. That is the end of the reading for today. And if you don't have time uh, to, to listen to this next portion of today's reading, A Most Interesting Act of Kindness, uh, you can stop right here uh, because we have done all of the Bible reading for September the 4th. However, <clears throat> we do have a reading that I am going to begin now. And this is based on Psalms 119, and it's entitled, A Most Interesting Act of Kindness. Amen. <clears throat> A most interesting act of kindness. Psalms 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible, containing 176 verses. It focuses almost exclusively on the Word of God, both His written and spoken Word. Virtually every one of its verses uses some term referencing God's Word. Law of the Lord, His testimonies, His precepts, His ways, His commandments, His statutes, etc. The chapter also lists extensive benefits that flow from a knowledge and application of God's Word. In fact, 
the blessings produced by directly incorporating his word into our lives are set forth not only in this chapter, but also throughout the Bible, including benefits such as spiritual life. John 6 and 63, 1 Peter 1 and verse number 23, spiritual growth, 1 Peter 2, 2, answered prayer, John 15, 7, success and prosperity, Joshua 1, 8, healing and deliverance, Psalms 107, verse number 20, cleansing and forgiveness, John 15, 3, wisdom and insight, Psalms 119, 98, guidance and direction, Psalms 119, 105, peace and stability, Psalm 119, 165, insight and revelation, Psalm 119, 130, and many other advantages proceeding from a personal study and application of God's Word. Early American Christians who had experienced these life-changing blessings wanted every other person to also enjoy them. To that end, in 1809, signer of the Declaration Benjamin Rush helped form America's first Bible society, the Philadelphia Bible Society, explaining, having taken into consideration the inestimable value of the revelation which it hath pleased God to make to our world of his existence, character, will, works, and grace in Jesus Christ in the Bible, and of the great benefits to be expected from the distribution of it, the Bible, among persons who are unable or not disposed to purchase it, we have agreed to form a society for that purpose to be called the Bible Society. Rush further stated that the society not only wanted the Bible in the hands of every individual, but they also wanted to stimulate the friends of the Bible in the other large cities on this continent to exert themselves to establish societies similar to the one organized in this city. The Philadelphia Bible Society, therefore, was the first in what became a rapidly burgeoning movement. Only a year later, their second annual report joyfully announced that Bible societies had also been formed in Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and South Carolina. <clears throat> Their third report listed 15 societies, and by the eighth report, an amazing 121 Bible societies had been started, many of our founding fathers themselves. In 1816, the first National Bible Society, the American Bible Society, was formed. All Bible societies prior to that had focused on specific regions or groups, such as states, cities, sailors, women, 
inmates, etc. But the American Bible Society turned its attention to the country as a whole and also to working with other nations to distribute the Word of God worldwide. Significantly, the original founding officers of the American Bible Society were a veritable who's who of American political leaders. Its first president was founding father Elias Boudinot, who had served as a president of the Continental Congress signed the final peace treaty with Great Britain to end the revolution, helped frame the Bill of Rights, and was the first attorney admitted to the U.S. Supreme Court bar. Throughout his life, Boudinot, like so many other founders, had been a serious student of the Bible. He was 76 years old when he became president of the American Bible Society and had read through the Bible numerous times. His view on the benefits of Bible reading was clear. And I quote, For nearly half a century, I have anxiously and critically studied that invaluable treasure, the Bible, and I still scarcely ever take it up that I do not find something new, that I do not, uh, that, that I do not receive some valuable addition to my stock of knowledge, or perceive some instructive fact never observed before. In short, were you to ask me to recommend the most valuable book in the world, I should fix on the Bible as the most instructive both to the wise and ignorant. Were you to ask me for one affording the most rational and pleasing entertainment to the inquiring mind, I should repeat, it is the Bible. And should you renew the inquiry for the best philosophy or the most interesting history, I should still urge you to look into your Bible. I would make it, in short, the Alpha and Omega of knowledge. Burdenot acknowledged a profound truth. No matter how many times someone reads through the Bible, each time he will find things he has never before seen or noticed. This is why the Bible uses the term unsearchable in describing God and his word. You will never get to the bottom of all the knowledge it contains. As Romans 11 33 and 34 affirms, O oh, the depths of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who became his counselor? God's word truly is unsearchable. You will find uh, uh, new applications and insights every time you go through it. And as Boudinot pointed out, the Bible is the best source of knowledge for every individual, no matter what he is seeking. Whether he is wise or ignorant, looking for information on history or philosophy, or searching for something entertaining or profound. As Boudinot acknowledged, 
The Bible is the Alpha and Omega of knowledge, the beginning and the end of useful information in every area. When Budenot retired as president of the American Bible Society, its second president was John Jay, the original Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court and an author of the Federalist Papers. His view on the importance of sharing God's Word with others was clear. And I quote, We know that a great proportion of mankind are ignorant of the revealed will of God. By conveying the Bible to people thus circumstanced, we certainly do them a most interesting act of kindness. We thereby enable them to learn that man was originally created and placed in a state of happiness. But becoming disobedient was subjected to the degradation and evils which he and his posterity have since experienced. Romans 5 12 through 14. The Bible will also inform them that our gracious Creator has provided for us a Redeemer, in whom all the nations of the earth should be blessed. Psalms 72, verses 1 through 17. I'm sorry, Psalms 72, verse number 17. That this Redeemer has made atonement for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 2, 2. And thereby reconciling the divine justice with the divine mercy has opened a way for our redemption and salvation. Hebrews chapter 10, and that these inestimable benefits are of the free gift and grace of God, not of our deserving nor in our power to deserve. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. The Bible will also animate them with many explicit and counseling assurances of the divine mercy to our fallen race, and will repeated in invitations to accept the offers of pardon and reconciliation. Romans 10, 13. The truth of these facts and the sincerity of these assurances being unquestionable, they cannot fail to promote the happiness of those by whom they are gratefully received, and of those by whom they are benevolently communicated. Founding Fathers Elias Budenot and John Jay were only two of many significant civil leaders who helped start Bible societies to distribute the Word of God. Others who helped pioneer the early movement included signers of the Constitution, Charles Codsworth, uh, Pinckney, John Langdon, James McHenry, and Rufus King. Signers of the Declaration, Benjamin Rush and Thomas Jefferson. Revolutionary War Generals, John Brooks, John Hamilton, Rufus Putnam, and Matthew Clarkson. U.S. Supreme Court Justices, John Jay, John Marshall, Bushrod Washington, and Smith Thompson. 
Attorney General of the United States, William Wirt and Felix Grundy. U.S. Secretary of War, Robert Troop. U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, Joseph Norse. U.S. President, John Quincy Adams. U.S. Vice President, Daniel Tomskins. State Supreme Court Justices, William Tilgman, Andrew Kirkpatrick, William Gaston, and James Burrell, Jr. Governors, Peter Voom, John Cotton Smith, George Madison, David Morrill, William Jones, Charles Goldsboro, Jonas Gilsha, Joseph Bloomfield, DeWitt Clinton, Thomas Worthington, Isaac Shelby, and Thomas Posey. These distinguished names represent only a fraction of those involved in Bible society leadership. Additionally, several founding fathers were also instrumental in producing specific editions of particular American Bibles. In 1791, signer of the Declaration John Witherspoon helped produce America's first family Bible, the Collins Bible. In 1798, America's first hot-pressed Bible, the largest Bible ever published in America to that time, was produced with the help of President John Adams, Vice President Thomas Jefferson, Declaration signers John Hancock and Samuel Chase. Constitution signers Gunning Bedford, George Reed, James Wilson, John Dickinson, Jared Ingersoll, Thomas Mifflin, and Alexander Hamilton. Constitutional Convention Delegate John Lansing, Chief Justice John Jay, and Revolutionary General and Secretary of State, Timoth Pickering. In 1808, Charles Thompson, the Secretary of Congress and one of only two founders to sign the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, the rest signed on August the 2nd, produced Thompson's Bible the first translation of the Greek Septuagint into English. In 1812, signer of the Declaration, Benjamin Rush helped create America's first stereotyped Bible, an early form of mass production developed in Europe, and President James Madison and Secretary of State James Monroe obtained an act of Congress in order to deliver those Bibles duty-free. There are many other examples, and it is noticeable that these leaders in the Bible Society movement were not ministers of the gospel, but rather were political leaders. Presidents, vice presidents, court justices, military generals, and those from every other walk of public life. They understood the importance of the Bible and wanted all Americans to know God's Word, not only for its indispensable benefits for every individual, but also for the importance of biblical principles to the maintenance 
of American society and its institutions. Amen. So that gives us a little insight into how many well-known people, whether it be politicians, businessmen, everyday people, that had a very, very strong desire that everyone know and understand the Word of God. Amen. A most interesting act of kindness. I want to thank you for being a part of today's reading. Amen. You have a very, very good rest of your day, and we will see you tomorrow.